Welcome to lecture 15. Today we will find out about material handling equipment or MHE. In this lecture, we will first understand what is material handling. Then we will look at material handling considerations and how to select MHE. Material handling is simply defined as the task of moving small quantities of goods over relatively short distances compared with longer haul product movement by transportation carriers. This is achieved by using various types of equipment. Material handling can take place within a manufacturing site, a warehouse, or a distribution center, and in retail stores. It also takes place during multimodal transportation when goods are transferred between modes. A large proportion of material handling activities take place within the warehouse. When transport vehicles arrive at the warehouse, goods need to be unloaded and moved to an inbound staging area for checks. Once the checks are completed, the goods are put away to storage locations. In the storage area, goods are sometimes moved around as part of replenishment, consolidation, and stock check activities to optimize the storage efficiency and inventory accuracy. When customer orders are received, goods are picked and transferred to designated locations for packing, followed by staging, pending collection by transport carriers. Finally, the goods are dispatched out and loaded onto transport vehicles. Products come in various sizes, shapes, volumes, and weights. There are many varieties of material handling equipment, or MHE, available to handle this diversity of products. Just like storage systems, they can be manual, semi-automated, or fully automated. As in most cases, there is a trade-off between cost and speed or capacity. Low-cost equipment are usually manual, are slower, and can only handle small volumes. High-cost equipment are typically powered and automated, operate at higher speeds, and be more efficient. When considering this trade-off, companies need to take a more holistic approach. For example, a company may choose to use lower-cost manual equipment to save costs. However, material handling is a repetitive activity required at every step of the warehouse processes. If the volume is high, the warehouse workers may not be able to cope. The company ends up with higher labor costs as they need to hire more people to do the job or face opportunity costs of order non-fulfillment. In a worst-case scenario, they end up with workers who are injured due to the strain of using manual MHE. As such, companies need to evaluate this trade-off. From a process point of view, companies should always try to incorporate load unitization and maximization into material handling processes to increase efficiency. Load unitization refers to moving goods in a unit, such as a pallet or a container, from point to point versus in loose cartons or packages. Maximization refers to moving goods in larger loads where possible. As the load size increases, the number of trips decreases. The many varieties of MHE are generally differentiated by the extent that manual power is required to operate it. Let's start with the manual MHE. Manual MHE are hand-operated, although most are designed to provide some mechanical advantage in the movement of goods. However, this is entirely limited to the operator's physical capabilities. They are low cost, requires only small investments for higher of purchase, are often quite small in size, flexible, can be deployed anywhere. This is a suitable option for a very low throughput operation. One of the most commonly found manual MHE is the pallet jack, otherwise known as the pallet truck. It works on simple hydraulic principles. Force applied results in load being lifted off the floor, sufficiently for easy movement supported by wheels. A pallet jack can be used to lift and move pallets within a warehouse or load or unload pallets from a shipping container. Flatbed trolleys are used to move loose cargo within a warehouse or for delivery to small businesses or consumers. They are very flexible as they are light and can be folded for easy storage. They are also relatively low in cost. Roll cages are used to consolidate orders consisting of multiple SKUs. They have the added advantage of being suitable for direct transfer to transport vehicles for use in deliveries. Order picking trolleys are usually made of steel or aluminum frames configured with either plastic bins or customized cartons for small order picking. There are many variations possible, single, double, multiple tiers, bins, with or without writing tops, standard wheels or pneumatic wheels for different types of warehouse flooring. Besides manual MHG, there are many varieties of motorized lift trucks used in manufacturing or warehousing facilities. They have great flexibility as they may be fitted in different ways for handling different types of goods. Power-assisted equipment have many advantages. That's increased material handling speed and this increases worker productivity, high flexibility as they can handle wide variety of cargo types, Increased space utilization as high load stacking is possible. Generally, they do not become obsolete easily and are considered a relatively low investment. 
The powered pallet jack, otherwise known as the electric pallet truck, is a motorized version of the pallet jack we discussed earlier. As it is motorized, it can be used to lift and move even heavier or even snack pallets, generally operated using a throttle on the handle to move upwards or reverse and steered by swinging the handle in the intended direction. The fork lift is the most common type of lift truck. As the name implies, forks stick out from the front of the vehicle when used to engage a pallet. Fork lifts can be powered with gas, diesel or electric batteries. The electric fork lifts are probably the most commonly used ones in modern warehouses. These are typically used for loading and unloading shipping containers. Fork lifts can be fitted with a push-pull device for handling non-palletized cargo or clamps for handling cargo that comes in bales. Fork lifts also come in gigantic sizes. For example, this Heister fork lift is used for container handling and can lift containers of more than 30 tons in weight. The Ridge truck offers a maximum lift height and capacity with great maneuverability. It is commonly deployed for warehouse indoor operations as its low undercarriage and electric motors make it unsuitable for outdoors use like the fork lift. The design of the Ridge truck allows it to lift up to great heights in a very tight working environment. This makes it ideal for use in picking pallets from pallet racking. It may be fitted with cameras that transmit video to an LCD screen within the cab so that the warehouseman has improved visibility and safety of handling when putting away or retrieving pallets at great heights. The Very Narrow Owl Truck, otherwise known as the VNA truck, is designed to operate inside very narrow owls with high racking. It operates using a ground-based laser system or rail-guided system which guides the unit as it moves down and out, allowing it to move at relatively high speeds. Overall, it allows optimization of storage capacity and efficient storage and retrieval of pallets in very high throughput operations. Order pickers are designed for operators to achieve faster, more accurate picking. For low-level picking activity, the order picker comes with a simple lifting platform. For high-level operations, it may come with a cage or platform with safety barriers. In both cases, operators are required to put on a safety harness attached to a secure point on the order picker to prevent a hot fall from height. Wave pickers are also designed for order picking but more for smaller loads. They are usually smaller in size and typically operate in narrow aisles and at working heights of up to 5 meters. They move relatively faster compared to the order pickers. Finally, we are going to take a look at fully mechanized MHE. A variety of computer-controlled handling equipment are used to support warehousing and distribution operations. There can be extensive application of technology, including barcoding, radio frequency or RF, lasers, optical sensors, and wireless communications. Automated guided vehicles, or AGVs, are computer-controlled load carriers that travel along predefined paths in a facility without an onboard operator in a manner similar to transportation drones we studied in the previous term. Navigation is based on computer-based software and a combination of various guidance technologies, including lasers, optical sensors, and magnetic gyroscope-based inertia guidance. Real-time control and monitoring is possible through wireless communications, and data is collected about each unit's exact location, which interfaces with software directing the destination and routing logic. The main advantage of AGVs is their reliability. AGVs perform repetitive movement tasks more reliably compared to humans, improving efficiency. Yet, they are also flexible as they can be reprogrammed easily when operational needs change. AGVs require very little space to operate compared to conventional lift trucks and conveyor belts. The use of AGVs is scalable as more can be added to expand capacity as and when required. Last but not least, it helps to reduce labor costs and other subsequent costs incurred. Let's take a look at a few types of AGVs. The automated cart is probably the simplest kind of AGV with very minimal features and low cost implementation. It essentially follows the warehouse worker around to assist in carrying products. The unit load AGV transport loads such as pallets or bins on their decks along predefined paths in the facility. The Tiger AGV pulls a series of non-motorized trailers that each carries a load. The automated lift truck is a driverless reach truck equipped with a camera and radar system that is capable of putting away and retrieving pallets from allocated racking positions. It can also be integrated with the ERP system for real-time updates. 
Autonomous mobile robots or EMRs are similar to AGVs but do not require a set track or preset route between locations. They create their own routes based on inbuilt maps and real-time data collected from the surrounding environment through the use of onboard sensors. In the warehouse, EMRs can support picking and sorting to cartons and totes. They can also carry out inventory checks from up to 25 feet away using RFID sensors and scanners, improving inventory accuracy and discouraging theft. They can also be deployed in supermarkets such as Walmart to scan store shelves rapidly to provide near real-time updates. In a manufacturing facility, they can be integrated into a production line running 24-7 to move materials seamlessly, accurately, efficiently and safely to each station. Conveyors can be used for loads of different sizes, including pallets, cartons, cases or totes. They can be laid out in a horizontal, inclined, vertical or even spiral configuration and powered by gravity, hydraulics or electricity. Conveyors can be set to operate at varying speeds to accommodate slow and peak period demands. The use of conveyors reduces the volume of manual load movement. This helps to reduce the risk of operator injury since there is lower risk of collision associated with manual load handling using lift trucks. Overall, they automate handling of large volumes at reduced labour, resources and costs. Industrial robots come in a wide range of models with varying reach distances, load capacities and number of axes of travel. Each robot typically comes with a jointed arm designed to perform a variety of tasks as directed by a combination of computer software and or manual controls. Enabled by computer vision systems, newly developed robotic arms can recognize products and perform pace picking even. Industrial robots can operate around the clock on a dangerous and on repetitive task with consistent precision and accuracy not possible for humans. For example, at the Unilever facility in Poland, collaborative robots or cobots work alongside humans packing and palletizing goods at the astonishing speed of 1,100 boxes per 8-hour shift. Meanwhile, Chinese logistics robots company Dorobot has created a robot capable of loading a container autonomously as part of a container booking, planning and loading solution, seamlessly integrating warehouse management systems, customer requirements and operational needs. Industrial robots offer similar advantages to the rest of fully mechanized equipment, high speed, accuracy, precision, flexibility, easy programming, and ability to perform different tasks when the need arises. By reducing the amount of manual load movement, it reduces the risk of operator injury. Overall, it can automate many tasks for large volumes and reduce labor, resource, and costs. Routine inventory counting is essential for the purpose of verifying quantities and condition of goods, while annual stock counts are for audit and finance reporting purposes. Traditional accounts are expensive and time-consuming. Drones equipped with sensors, AI, and machine learning capabilities are potential game changers. They fly around the warehouse performing stock takes just by reading barcodes and RFID texts, sending data to the warehouse management systems in real time. This is not a dream, but a fact, and may well be warehousing's future reality. With that, we have come to the end of Lecture 15.